Uh, I hope everybody had a good lunch. Who's excited to learn about WordPress 6.4 that's coming out in November? Yeah, we're all on 6.3.1 right now. Hopefully running stable. Um, I'm Damon Cook. Um, the slide link is there, but if you just go to my uh, site, colorfultones.com, the slides are there as well. You can get to them from there. Um, I am a developer advocate at WP Engine. Uh, before that, I was a front end developer for about uh, 10 years in WordPress centric agency, agency land. Um, so I worked with a lot of the, the mainstream WordPress agencies. Uh, so I'm just going to give an overview of these features that are that's scheduled to come out in early November, November 7th, if we want to stick to a deadline. <laughs> but things get shifted and any of this can get shifted. Um, but a lot of the stuff that I'll be covering today has been blessed by the release squad. So hopefully nothing t will change too much. Just checking out how big that is. Uh, it's okay. I have a lot of uh, videos on my on slides that are auto playing. Uh, they're very short. They're just kind of brief overviews of the feature I'm talking about, and just trying to let you know. And hopefully, they're going to work okay with the internet. Um, 6.4 is the third release of 2023, and uh, the final release. Um, and it's led by an underrepresented gender squad. So let's give a big, that's an awesome, we need more of that. Um, primarily focused on extending the features uh, from phase two, which is uh, mostly around design. So block patterns, uh, full site editing, um, and laying the groundwork for phase three work around collaboration features and then phase four being multilingual support. Uh, 6.4, just a breakdown of the Gutenberg releases that are included in that there, 16.2 to 16.7. Can they, everybody hear me okay? No. No? I don't think the mic's doing thing. I can, oh, well, I don't have, here. Can you hear me better? Yeah. Better? Okay, I'll do the microphone. Um, just as kind of uh, put uh, the main features that I'll be going through here into a couple sections. Uh, we're going over the default theme, um, style, grouping of things that affect styles, uh, interface, blocks, and patterns. And we'll go into detail as I get through these. The 2024 new default theme. Um, Hopefully you've seen some of the designs that are out there. It's all on Figma and all publicly available. Um, it does not, this year, uh, they're not focusing on a specific kind of topic, but they have three kind of general use, use cases that they're targeting the designs around in the build and full page patterns. Um, entrepreneurs, uh, photographer and artists and writers and bloggers. So there is quite a wide variety of um, designs and builds and versatility in these designs. And this is already, uh, of course, all this work is already underway. Lots of folks behind the scenes. These are just kind of some of the screen grabs from the designs in Figma. Um, good, the videos are working. Um, this is just a kind of a walkthrough of the installation of 2024. I'm kind of going to go through a lot of these features kind of quick with the hope that at the end I can, folk, I can go into some of these um, features if anybody wants me to in local and just kind of step through them in, in more detail. Um, but these are just kind of a previews of these features. Style enhancements. The font library, this is a big one. This, they've been working on this for a while. Um, this is kind of like, well, yeah, it's the media library for your fonts. And this is theme agnostic. So you can go into the site editor, toggle on, uh, open up the fonts library and install fonts from Google fonts, or you can even drag and drop your own fonts into the library. 
and activate them and then you still have to assign them to all the areas that you want them, use them like the headings and the body or any of the text elements. But this is great because then you can switch themes and you can still have your fonts available. Um, the, currently the, the, or the fonts do not like switch, like if you activate a theme or activate a font and then switch themes, that font necessarily won't carry over. You would have to reassign again to the body and all the elements that you want to use it on. But um, that, yeah, further work is being done on that, so. And there is support, a lot of people ask if there's support for variable fonts and kind of the, I think it's more of the, the way the Google Fonts API works, but um, you can, you actually have to download the variable font uh, package and then you can drag and drop it into your library because all these fonts are actually saved in your WP content fonts uh, directory. So um, yeah, so that's how you handle variable fonts because otherwise you have to kind of go through and assign like 100, all the different weights, 100, 200, 300 and grab the ones that you want. But if you want to use a single variable font, you can just drag and drop it in. Uh, global style revisions, this is actually, I think it came out in 6.3, or maybe or some of the earlier work was uh, before that, but this, there were some minor adjustments just to the way it worked because um, in, the la or well, in the current release, you have to save two, essentially two uh, changes to make revisions take place, to show up in the UI which is kind of counterintuitive. You want that first change that you make in the site editor to be recorded as a revision so you can roll back. Um, but yeah, so that's been changed and there might have been some little UI adjustments around how, how you can, uh, down at the bottom here, there's a button to apply and then reset to default. So you can, um, after making several changes, you can go back to a blank slate if you want. That was the style enhancer. These are interface enhancements, um, things to to help. Uh, what's the yeah to help with the writing experience? So uh, the navigation. This actually affects the navigation list and quote block. Um, just the pinning of the toolbar um, in location to where you're editing with nested blocks has been altered to. It's a better, it's, it's, so this is the before as I'm playing here. And I think you can kind of see how the toolbar above follows along. And then this is the change for 6.4 where it stays attached to the top and is a little more intuitive in the UI. So it's not moving around a lot and shifting. Uh, that, that is great for the list block as well because if you get nested list items, a lot of times the toolbar would, if you had four down and you would go to edit the fourth item and you wanted to go edit the third, the toolbar would be above the third so you couldn't really get to it or click to it. So um, now it stays pinned to the top, which is easier. Uh, this is the link block. Well, yeah, the, just the link. Um, the open in a new tab, access to that is a little easier now. And, like one or two less clicks and it shows up in the preview. So I think that was uh, some feedback that the team got and they made adjustments there. So that's really handy. Um, the list view, which is the kind of the side, the left hand sidebar that pops out when you're editing blocks. Um, there's quite a few enhancements. You can multi-select now. Well, you could multi-select, but now when you multi-select, you can use escape key to deselect those items, whereas before, which it's pretty common um, interaction, keyboard interaction, but it wasn't working before, so uh, they fixed that. Uh, you can renown, rename the group block in the sidebar as well, which is kind of anybody in like Photoshop or Figma, you, you can set your layer names and keep everything tidy and organized, um, which is great. And it's, uh, it's, you can rename in the sidebar, but you can also 
rename on the right hand side under settings for the group block as well. And also in the sidebar for the gallery block and the image block, there's now some tiny thumbnails that are displayed when you've attached items there just to kind of give you an indication of what, yeah, just, the, you know, your images are there. They're pretty small thumbnails, which, you know, I mean, it meets the UI, but um, it's a good visual indication to reinforce what's there. Um, Duplicating blocks is a lot easier with keyboard shortcuts. I don't think this, yeah, this didn't exist in the current release. So now, um, yeah, the command, what is it, command option D to duplicate any of the blocks from the sidebar is handy. Command palette, is anybody using the command palette? No, no, <laughs> I had a feeling about it. Um, the command palette is, uh, anybody use Alfred? It's kind of that little, or finder, spotlight, you know, you can get uh, quick access, especially in the site editor. But with this release, they're introducing more functionality to duplicate or insert before or after blocks. So it's just kind of a quick way to keyboard navigate a lot of these items and make the editing experience a little faster if you prefer to use the keyboard for those types of uh, editing functionality. Um, they also, yeah, they made the command palette responsive, um, so it's easier to use on smaller screens. Um, the snack bar, which is an odd name for something, but it's these little items that show up in the bottom left, like if you've ever saved a post, I'm sure you see the um, the preview link is there. Um, so there's just some very subtle tweaks to the animation time and delay around those just to make it a little easier to, to inter interact with. Block enhancements, block hooks. This kind of came up earlier in Jonathan's talk. This is kind of a different idea of hooks in a way but not at the same time, I guess. Because you're, you're inserter, inserting, um, this API now allows extenders and plugin authors to s create maybe a custom block and assign it and say, insert before every single heading or H1. And this gives you the API to do that. Uh, you can do it before or after or first child or last child. Um, but this is a, yeah, I think this is gonna, this is gonna be really helpful for extenders to, yeah, to integrate their blocks in different areas throughout the site, especially in the site editor. Um, and this is, the thing to remember about this is it recognizes user changes. So if a user modifies a template in the site editor um, and then maybe goes and installs a plugin that use, utilizes the block hooks, um, it will not interfere or alter their template, but it will show in the UI, giving them the option to opt into that at a later point should they choose to do so. The query loop got some um, attention and the pagination, um, there is the, you can probably barely see that, but when you have uh, several dozen posts and it's paginated, and sometimes you have the numbers in the middle, which is optional, you can now adjust, you know, do you want to have 10 of those numbers or three? Um, so you can slide, there's a slider interface for that on the query loop block. And there's also, oh yeah, sorry, I think I skipped a slide. That was the pagination. Yeah, this is the enhanced pagination which is the good old days of Ajax. So um, this uses the new interactive, interactivity API to allow users to not have to refresh the page should they hit next or before in a pagination. Um, and that again is an opt-in toggle for the query loop block itself. And that's just, uh, yeah, there's the page numbers here. Looks like it got cut off a little bit there. This is uh, the group block um, enhancements. 
Group Lock now has uh, background image support, so you can sign a background image to it. And also, um, I think in 6.3, the featured image had support for aspect ratio, but now the image block also has support for aspect ratio. And I mean, this comes, I mean, it's really handy, but it's also good for any pattern and theme builders to set an aspect ratio on a placeholder image. So if somebody installs your theme, say from .org, and it's just, um, you know, an image placeholder, you don't really have a full image attached. They can uh, assign an image there and it'll still have the aspect ratio that you wanted to have in the design. So it's, it's good for extenders and good for the end users to, to have that set. Um, Lightbox toggle for images. Um, and I think, yeah, there's a little bit of a demo there, but I can also, um, it just gives a modal overlay pop-up, whatever you want to call it, for images. Um, and they, again, this is a toggle um, in the sidebar, right-hand sidebar for image blocks and I'm pretty sure gallery blocks as well, any images in the gallery block. That was the block enhancements. These are pattern enhancements for block patterns. Um, 6.3, there was the, the language change around reusable blocks going to synced and uh, non-synced patterns. Um, and with it, this kind of, the, the idea that reusable blocks um, could be, um, yeah, just organized differently with categories. But so they, they had future parity with um, how you can organize your patterns. So now if you go and create and save a pattern, while you're editing, you can categorize it in a custom category and uh, come back to that category later on in the site editor over on the sidebar here. And you can import and export uh, your block patterns um, just as JSON files. Again, that's the parity with uh, reusable blocks, what it was before. Um, so that's easy to kind of migrate your patterns from one site to another. And that's just a slew of other items, noteworthy items that I kind of, yeah, there's, there's probably so much more that I, that I didn't even cover. Um, but this is kind of where I thought if, you, if anybody wants, I can go and demo some of these features in a local instance. And there is also an open call for testing. Um, they're always looking for testing. So there's a few links here um, and also a beta tester. I mean, you can use the WordPress beta tester plugin to install uh, 6.4 beta one. I can show you how to do that. If you have any questions, just grab me. Um, there's also a local blueprint, which I created. So you can drag and drop it into local and have it, it's all set up for you. Um, Any questions? Anything? Use local by flywheel. Local by WP Engine. Yes, yes. I, I work for WP Engine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I do. I, I mean, previous, uh, prior to working for WP Engine, I worked. I used local, so I'm, I'm a fanatic, and so it's. WP Engine, yes. Yep. It's great. Yes, it's a handy tool. Um, I'm in there daily, I'll so. Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, just want to confirm something you said earlier. So with the new font library, if I install a font from Google Fonts, it's going to actually download the files and put them, like, it's going to save them locally. So if that yes. font then later disappears from Google Fonts, it's going to Yep, yep, that file will reside on your end server. Yep, in the fonts directory. Sure, yeah. He asked um, if you, if in the font library, the new font library, if you install a Google font in the library, it will um, save that font locally or well, on your server. It's in the WP content fonts directory, so it'll be saved there. 
So if tomorrow Google removed that font, it's still on your server and you still have access to it and um, yeah. Yep. What new feature are you most excited about? Block hooks. Um, I think that's gonna be really helpful um, because I think you can do some pretty, and I think there's still some use cases that might not even, we might not even be, nobody's thought of yet. Um, so just being able to slot in your own blocks in unique spaces um, for, you know, because there, there are miss missing features that I'm sure people <laughs> allude to all the time. So slotting in any el custom elements before or after, um, I think that's going to be really handy. Mm -hmm. But you and you put in after in Black Eyed Jason, you put in after like core character. Mm -hmm. So Jeff is awesome. That block would just show up. Yes. After each paragraph, is that how it block? Yes, that's the theory. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yep. And I can't wait to install that plugin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, uh, he asked. Um, no, I'm just curious. I just, that means that I, I didn't know that meant the before after. Like, it's just hard. Yep. Like, even though whether you're in the block editor yep. or if you're in the FFC, that is just going to automatically be, you know, injected. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I know it affects, it affects, yes, patterns, templates, template parts. So yes, and just as long as they haven't been user modified, then yes, it would affect those. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did talk earlier, and a lot of this stuff seems like it's solving problems that haven't happened. So this is really cool. Um, but there was one that you scrolled past, which is like about columns. No, oh, down. Oh yeah, you. I know. Yep. Um, yeah, that's a that's a nice because I saw that uh, the equal height columns. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's a that's a nice feature and. Yeah, it should absolutely. Yeah, that's that's what um, the alignment is for. And sorry for the misspelling here. <laughs> it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, Yes, another feature that actually I was really uh, intrigued and in, I think is really helpful, but this is really a code only change is button. If you use the button block and you actually want it to be a button element, you can do so, um, but it's more of a code change because you have to go in the code editor view and basically just uh, swap out the, the A link with a button and make sure the markup matches, but it, it won't give you a odd error message when you switch back to the visual uh, editor. So it's kind of a, yeah, code only, but lays the groundwork for lots of potential enhancements around buttons, so. Yeah, I would imagine so. I'm trying to think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of a use case that wouldn't. Yeah, that's. I think that's really targeted. Yeah, for inner nested blocks, that the, that would be useful. Good question. I do not have an answer for that. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Yeah, he asked if there, if there was anything, sorry, I, I'm not repeating the question, and I apologize. Uh, he just asked if for 6.4, if we know if anything's being deprecated, and yeah, I'm not sure the answer to that, to be honest. Yep. Similar question is, do you know when PHP is still in PHP 7.4? Oh, um, I should... I do not know the answer to that either. I feel like I should though. Yeah, it is a great question. Um, what, what What is the minimal supported PHP version is what you're getting at essentially, yeah, right? Support for the right, when, when is that coming, you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think it, it sh yeah, it should uh, support 
the latest PHP, or well, 8.2, I think. But there may be, I guess you're indicating there's issues for you. <laughs> well, if you listen to Matt talk about it, the state of the word, mm -hmm. he had not nice things to say about how the PHP uh, overseers were kind of taking that project hmm. along, and that's why there's been a lot, a lot of lag and support before as well as post. Yeah, I'm not privy to any of that, so I can't, yeah, I won't try to <laughs> answer. Um, but that's a great question. Um, I think 7.4 will be right? Yeah, yeah. 7. Point. The problem is coming yeah. that hosts don't like the support of the security patches. Yes. Yep. Right. And there's like reasons I've held some sites back that they would die if they went to eat on something. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely definitely test for those types of upgrades. Um Yeah, I'm not sure how they, what the, yeah, I'm not sure the, yeah, for 5.6, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about, I'm not privy to, I, yeah, I'm not following up on the PHP support versions in WordPress, so I do not have an answer to that. <laughs> yeah. Activity Pub? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is that an Activity Pub? Is that something for um, like Mastodon? The, Correct, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Metaverse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. Good question. That I do not, I do not have answers to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back to the Fall Library. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, yes, that's a great question. He's asking whether other libraries like Typekit will be supported in the font library. Um, I know for 6.4, I'm pretty sure it's just scope to Google Fonts, but I'm sure that I've seen that come up, that question come up quite a bit. And so I think that the, f the bones are there for the framework to you know integrate with other libraries. So I think it's just mostly getting it stable for one, Google being probably the more popular. I know that there was concerns um, that they had to work around because um, especially with Google fonts, there's a prompt to, sh you know, if a user goes to the font library and goes to the install fonts, and wants to use Google Fonts, they're prompted with a little um, notification that so they can opt in because they're basically downloading resources from Google. Um, so I know EU has policies around stuff like that. So they had to be really careful about how they handled that and just make users aware that they're accessing files and, and saving them to their fonts, uh, the font directory. So. Any other questions? Does anybody want me to go in to dive in on any of these and show? Okay. Any particular, or all of them? <laughs> the block, oh, that, mm, yeah. Yeah, uh, I wasn't prepared for that. That would be a custom block. Mm, yeah, that might be a little, little too much. <laughs> a little too much coding, live coding. Um, yeah. But I'd be, I'd be happy to follow up with you on that because I definitely will be exploring that probably in the next week. Yeah, yeah. 
absolutely. Um, Oh yeah, the the buttons. Yeah, that's I haven't actually tried that out yet. So I would be happy to to let's break things <laughs> and put the mic down a sec. So, so here I have just this is a basic. Uh, 6.4 beta one um, install, and this is the 2024 theme. I actually was messing around font with fonts, so there is an odd font applied right now. So that's why this navigation uh, is looking a little different. Um, but he asked about the new button element support, so I'm just gonna walk through that quick. So if we enter, let's see, buttons, and then in theory, let's see how that works. That is not how I expected it to behave. <laughs> that is the notification I did not want to see. So I wonder if, let me try one other thing. Uh, probably because I did not uh, supply the type maybe. Nope. So I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to follow up on that and see how that's supposed to work because that's how I understood it to work. Um, I thought it was kind of neat though that it's not buttons and then a button, it's just a button. Like that seems different, right? Like you insert it just a, normally when you push if you want a button, you have to like first get the whole buttons block. And then well, this is, this still is the buttons. Yeah, this still is the buttons block. Oh, yeah, that's who you start out with um, always. Yeah, it's yeah, I just use the shorthand to. Uh, yeah, because you can use this uh, syntax. I just type B-U-T and enter. Yeah, I went quick. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I can quickly kind of show the font library. We go into the site editor. And then go into global styles area and typography. And then this is the font library, manage fonts. Um, so I had already installed some of the, whoops, Google fonts here. Um, but you can, we can continue. So this is, I don't know if this will work without, oh yeah, it does with, I thought I would have a bad connection, but so you can install some fonts from here and apply them. So once I hit that install, it's in my fonts directory, that font. Although I thought I, didn't I just do that? Or, <laughs> hmm, that is odd. Oh yeah. Oh, I, yes. And I forgot to mention actually, cause the font library is not in beta one right now. You actually have to have the Gutenberg plugin installed, but I, that shouldn't be the case for beta two. As far as I understand, it should be no longer, you shouldn't be required to be running the, the Gutenberg plugin, but that's odd. Um, yeah, I don't know why that's behaving like that. Cause I did it earlier and it was not once I installed the font. It might be a network issue and something worth reporting a bug on. Um, is there anything else anybody wanted me to touch on and show and demonstrate? Yeah. Just a question, but um, earlier you mentioned that they were laying the groundwork for um, collaboration features. Yeah, co-authoring. 
I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what got rolled in for 6.4, but yeah, I think it's a lot of a lot of planning and discussion at this point, and not so much probably code related. Well, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh. <laughs>